millions upon millions of children are laid alone, suffering, starving, with bed sores, confused in pain, mentally, physically, emotionally, unable to talk, unable to get up and walk away, unable to call for help. And so a child incarnates in a body which is defective, in a world which is defective. And they have parents who are defective. And they keep them alive, not out of love and compassion, but out of fear that they will be prosecuted for infanticide if they don't. And these children are there in this bubble, this cocoon of a frequency of suffering like you have never imagined. This village, it will start the journey in collective human consciousness for us to recognize and see that these millions of invisible children are here. And perhaps we might get up and go to war for them and set them free. And in setting free one child, you begin to set free fallen consciousness for all of man. I have begun to wonder this week how many among you may be worshipping Satan? How many among you may be unknowingly, unwittingly being deceived into worshipping the adversary of mankind? The adversary of mankind being the, the interdimensional forces and species that are tainting human consciousness into separation from creator and into a focus and indulgence on the self and its desires and pleasures. And to do so not for fun but to extract that energy to take the light of Christ and place it into a simulation that is so deceptive, that is so powerful and potent that it lowers that light of Christ into frequency ranges whereby which the lower astral, the decrepit, the weak, the demonic, the satanic, the fallen angels can access it. And I say that with potency. For this week, I have had to deal with the gang rape of three children, three separate instances. Ritualistic, satanic gang rape. I have had to sit with the father of a child, age 10, as he wept, his life feeling utterly destroyed by what the enemy had done through these men. And these men, are not worshipping at the altar of Satan with a pentagram and, and all of that paraphernalia. These are family men with jobs, with children of their own. But Satan has brought them into worship through a very clever system that many of us are being subjected to. It is a spiralling system of entrapment and I will explain it and how you can keep yourself and your family out of that spiral. It is akin to these, many of you may have seen them or not, a, a type of charity donation box where a coin rolls and rolls and rolls until it reaches that tight spiral in the middle and drops through. Satan is trying to get you every day to push your coin and your children's coin into that spiral that will only descend towards the tightened space. And within the tightened element of the spiral, you get grown men ritualistically raping children, believing they will be rewarded by spirits and entities of the fall. 
for doing so. Christ is not about preachers standing in front of a congregation boasting about their collection of watches. Aviation Watch, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, the AOPA, of which I've been a member for many years. And I had heard about that watch. It's a Brightling nav timer. <sighs> Brightling speaks aviation. Amen. You think that one's pretty? It's a Brightling. It has diamonds around the edge. Mylon Lefevre. This beautiful bride is right here, Christy. Mylon, call me. He said, how many Brightlings do you have? And I said, oh, I don't know, 36, I think. I haven't counted them lately. In my closet, I have winders, and there's, there's a lot of them in there. He said, I'm going to give you number 37. Now, he's believing God for his student. He said, I'm giving you my Bentley, and it has a Brightling clock. Whoa. <laughs> mm, thank you, Jesus. These are the servants of the enemy, and they are polluting the truth of Christ. Christ is not about preachers standing there boasting about the value of the chandelier in their home. We need to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I live in the biggest house in the state of Louisiana. I have the biggest house of any preacher in America. And I mean that arrogantly or pridefully. Oh. You like going with the wind? My house. Oh, I paid cash for the home. Well, it's 40,000 square foot. The God of this world will reward you with all the riches you want if you pollute the truth of Christ in your weakness, in your loveless approach to Christ's message. I have seen this week much, but what I fear for those out there listening, for I do not fear the enemy, I do not fear in the least the demonic. If God tells me to walk into a war zone and it's clear that I've been told, I'll walk there. Because I know God's voice. And before I move forward, the reason I know God's voice is I am not deluded with the misconception that many Christians hold. Many Christians stand there caught in a trap if they would just open their awareness to what they are saying. That they have attained Christ, that they have been spiritually reborn. And yet for Christ to be born, you must die. For Christ to be born, you must have been crucified. So who is the one making the claim to have attained Christ? Who is the one that is claiming to have attained the spiritual rebirth and the love of Christ and discipleship? That structure, who is claiming it? If the very predis of everything Yeshua said, not the church, is that you must die, you must be crucified for the power of Christ to be animated in the shape and form of your human body. What voice within you, what voice within us can say, I have attained? When Christ attains a man, that man becomes the hands and feet, the will and the love of the Christ. And no man can attain and hold that. You become a possession of Christ. Christ's awakening is never a possession of the image of thought of a man. And that leads me, importantly, into what Satan is doing. Satan is claiming your worship by forcing you into believing that you are thought. That is step one. In the beginning of the belief that you are thought begins the spiral of self-worship. Even if that self is filled with Christian imagery, even if it's filled with the lingua, 
even if its vocabulary is, is peppered with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, with Samuel, whatever it may be. So long as that image is there and you are identifying with that image as the owner of the Christ power, of the Christ relationship, Satan's got you at the beginning of that spiral of worship of self. Satan won't have you kneel at an altar with a pentagram, for all some do. I know that some openly do this. I know some sacrifice to Satan direct. But they are, they're a minority. What Satan needs is a worship from the majority. And the majority, if you tell them worship Satan, they won't do it. But if you tell them worship yourself, look around you. They are doing it. And the demons cackle, giggling. Giggling at what is happening. The brokenness of humanity. To not recognize that our connection with Christ, with the living God, is here and it's now. And our persistent need to formulate religion and external worship of a God that is far off is part of the fallen nature. A fallen nature implemented into mankind by that which has been called the fallen angels, the interdimensional oppressors, the Anunnaki, whatever you want to call them. They put that in you so you would take orders from the fallen. And this leaves you, instead of here and now knowing your creator through this moment, tangled in a slave system which is embedded in your mind, which makes you worship an external God and forms religion. Instead of us all standing back, away from religion and acknowledging something, something very true. If you were blind, deaf and mute, Christ still exists, still is, still moves, still changes you, still heals you, still transforms you. Only it's not contained with words and language and symbology and images. It's not held anymore, but it still is. Just because the human mind is trying to configure and calculate it. The human mind's configuration and calculation of Christ that is. Those calculations and con configurations are not the Christ. They are just words and labels to point at the isness of that reality. As soon as you begin to believe that you are thought, there begins the worship of self. New Age spiritual movements have this in the most plentiful of ways. I've seen it recently, these large festivals, Burning Man, something many people have heard of. A place where they say it's free and it's spiritual, but there are orgy tents. And it's very clear what are the manifestations of the flesh and the devil. Sexual immorality, orgies, focus on self-pleasure, taking the finite gift of life force and focusing it on storing and creating yet another memory of pleasure. Let's put that in perspective. Let's put a group of 20 men who are going to walk into a spiritual event, orgy tent, and use their life force to indulge in that. And then you get 20 real men who are going to get together and work out how to go and help little children who are starving and crying and struggling. Do you not just see it with clarity? Just because it's dressed in smiles and love and pretty colors doesn't mean it's not demonic. Doesn't mean it's not satanic. It's the lowest of spiritual expression. It's hedonism disguised as the pursuit of God. If you walk past a baby, abandoned on the road, screaming and crying, will you pick it up and cradle the baby? You will do it, for you will see the innocence. You will say, this child must be helped. But when you walk past the homeless man, who equally needs cradling 
Do you look at them with the same love, vulnerability? Or let's be honest, or is it disgust, repulsiveness? And this is the trick. For when you look at the child, you look at them without the interjection and the refraction of thought against your love. When you look at the addict, you look through the perception and the refraction of thought. If you identify with thought, the love of Christ will be diminished by your thought. You will begin to worship self. What do I want? What makes me happy? What do I feel like doing? Me, me, me. You see it even in spiritual leaders just talking about self, self-development. And yet, they are still constantly talking because they are in a meaning crisis because they've missed the cheat code that Jesus left them. Live your life as if others are more valuable than you and you will need nothing internally, which means you will never seek in the world to fulfill it for there's no void. But for that love to come, we can't identify with the self and with thought and that is the beginning of the spiral. Satan tricks you. You are a name, you are a nationality. You are an academic education. You're a mother, a father, a brother, a sister. All beautiful labels to point at beautiful and important elements of what we are. But a love that we think is pure and wholesome is polluted. It's a fallen love. It has condition of relationship. Yesterday, I held a dying boy. He was four years old. His mother was on her deathbed. The child had not been fed. He was beyond malnourished. His heart was beating at over 150 beats a minute. His breathing was labored. He just kept asking for water nonstop because he had barely any electrolytes. His dehydration was so high that water wasn't what he needed. As I held this boy and I was in tears holding him, this tiny little being fighting for his life in my arms. Inside my head, from within inside my fallen nature, came a thought. I'm grateful that's not my son, my biological son. And I heard it and I rebuked it immediately. Because that is a sickening love. It's not, if you look deeply, it is a love that is conditioned on relationship. And our own children deserve better. They deserve a love without condition. They deserve a love that's not conditioned on relationship. And so I rebuked that. I rebuked that part of my fallen nature. And I said, I, I, I refuse to look at it that way. This is my son. That is my son biologically. This is my son right here in my arm. And he's your son too. We are a human family. The boy is in hospital fighting for his life. He may or he may not survive. I've lost count of how many children I've seen die like this. And it's horrible. But how horrid that in those moments the mind does that. And unless we just become totally aware of our species and that part of us, the vulgarity of love refracted through thought, we won't understand. There's a famous song, a Christmas song, Band-Aid, that raised money for starving children in Africa. There's a line in that song that you may sing every year. And tonight, thank God it's them instead of you. That's the same space I am talking about where we, we accept this, this lessened version of love and it is Christ's love we must have. But Christ's love can't come when we worship self and Satan needs you to worship self. 
So it must begin, identify with thought. I'm sorry, I'm getting... I'm getting into an energy where I may not speak as clearly as what I should. I just grow tired. I grow tired of watching the luxury of the opulent lives of people who spend their whole time arguing doctrine and never ever setting people free so that Christ can actually have their life unto death. Christ's not playing. Christ doesn't want you to, to... Christ doesn't want you lukewarm. If you realize what's at stake here, people's souls, the suffering of the innocent, you should be ready to stand up as a man and say, I'm going to die for that because nothing else is worth living for. What higher value is there? And so, in the hope of communicating well what Satan is doing, and I apologize if the early part of the video has not managed to do that as I have not stayed in the love of my heart where I should be. The devil seeks your praise and worship by having you worship yourself, by celebrating your own achievements, by chasing your own desires, by living for the comfortable prison cell of worldly and physical pleasure desire. The devil seeks you to worship the self. But for you to worship the self, you must believe in the self as who you are. And so it begins like this. It begins by taking mankind into the knowledge of good and evil operating system and having him identify with his thought. That begins the spiral into self-worship, which at the tightest of points leads to the rape and sacrifice and all of the other brutalities that I am seeing of children all around the world, but in particular for me in this nation. If you believe that you are your name, put it down on the floor for a moment with me. You are here with me. You are here with me. You are aware with me. You can love me. You could hold me and hug me. There will be no thoughts in among that. So let us just take this name. Put that down. Let us just take your nationality and put it down. Let me take your religion and put that down. We have seen that religion can contort God's love, can restrict it, refract it. Let us take that too and put it down. Let us take our scientific labels and put those down. Just, just put them on the floor. Let us take our worldly desires I want the Ferrari, I want the mansion. Let's just take all of that and put it down. Now I'm just going to ask you, who's putting it down? Who is putting it down? And, and, and you may want to reply, well, it's, it's John. No, no, you've put your name down. Well, it's a human. No, you've put it down. Well, I'm a mother, I'm a father. No, however difficult it is, you've put down that label as well. A beautiful label to point at something profoundly important within life. But nevertheless, you've put it down. 
Who is the one putting it down? It can't be a mother that put down the label mother. Something else is there. There is something else there between you and I that is able to put it down. And that something else is the light of Christ that is being brought into human form. The Nag Hammadi called it the Sophia, dragged by the Archons, the interdimensional fallen angels, into this reality. The Sophia being the light of awareness, that you feel leave when a child dies, that you feel leave when your grandmother died. That something that is there between us, that is putting that down. That something you were once as a baby. As a small baby, you never knew a name, a nationality, a scientific label. You merely had awareness of the movements and the shapes. At some point, you didn't even know the difference between you and your mother. You were one symbiotic thing as far as you knew. You, you as a child, you were there before the body which has been tampered with by the fall to make us build systems of separation in the mind so that here and now in the innocent consciousness of a newborn baby that's connected with the love of God we are separated from it. You were there. You have been there. You that thinks you're a nationality and a mother and a father. You were once a baby who didn't understand any of that and yet you were here. And that which was here is the one that is able to put these things down. And this is why Jesus said you must hate your mother, father, brother, sister. For he also said unless you become as children you can't enter the kingdom. To move back to that state where you no longer believe that you are language, thoughts, labels, personal history. Where here and now a connection with the living God, which you had as a child and you can have today, is going to animate your life. And in animating your life is going to allow you to love in the same way you'd pick up an abandoned baby and care for them. Now your love will pick up the abandoned, homeless, disheveled character, the drug addict, and care for them. Because now your love is not poisoned by the fallen nature, the image of me based in thought. Now you're not worshipping Satan, for you're not worshipping self. For now the one that you were saying, I am Christian, I have attained Jesus, I am that structure that dares to take possession of the spiritual rebirth, that dares to say, I own it. As with any guru who says, I own enlightenment, I have attained enlightenment. Nonsense. Who attained it? The cessation of the attainer is the birth of Christ in human form and shape, in yours, in another, whoever it may be. But the man draped in robes saying, I've attained enlightenment. The very voice, the very structure claiming to attain it is evidence that it's not attained. For they have not been crucified and Christ born. And this is how the devil gets you. To worship yourself is to worship Satan. To pursue yourself and your endless self-improvement and self-desire is to give it over to Satan. And Jesus left the cheat code. Value all you meet above yourself. Value everybody you meet above yourself. And there will be no void left inside of you. No want for anything. For you will be completely whole and full with a love without condition that is the Christ born in ourselves. For as he was in this world, John 1, so are we.
It's not a game, guys. People are suffering. We're sitting here watching these preachers boast about their jets and their watches and their chandeliers. Poison. Poison. Vipers. Pharisees. Let them come and hold a child who needed five dollars so that they didn't have to die a prolonged, slow, suffering death. Let me stand with that child in my arms while they boast about their collections. Let me stand on the stage next to them. Let me show them Christ and not religion. Accept this. For Christ to be, you will not be. The voice of self preservation, the voice of fear, the voice claiming it has attained the spiritual rebirth of Christ. Examine that voice. Examine all of its structures. And you will see it can only hinder the work of God in this world. Who wishes to completely annihilate and obliterate the personal history and the personal self within you. Perhaps not permanently. So that you will walk into the most unlikely and outrageously dangerous and peculiar of situations and come out the other side smelling of roses because God was driving you not analysis and not the image in a mind that believes it knows God or dare to say it has attained Christ Christ attains you and you'll see the love of a man that Christ has attained. And you will see the poison of a man who thinks he has attained Christ. The two are incomparable. To all who suffer this night, may the masses take themselves away from the beginning of that spiral of self-worship and start surrendering their vessel to be Christ in whatever way he asks. I love you all. God bless.